Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another real-time revision. This is Brad Reed with the Inside Creative Writing Podcast. Thank you so, so much for being a member of the Patreon team. Um, get, I missed last week uh, getting a real-time revision up, and I sincerely apologize for that. It's been, uh, well, the biggest thing was is I was uh, down sick that week, but it's also been one of those crazy couple of weeks where you just feel like you can't even breathe, let alone do anything else. We're in the last couple of weeks of uh, my high school teaching gig, so swamped with grading and cleaning up the room for summer and all that stuff. Uh, I have a daughter that's graduating from college. She just graduated yesterday, so a bunch of events around that. And then I was sick, and on top of all that, I had jury duty, so it was just one of those uh, couple of weeks where everything uh, piled up at once. So anyway, apologize for that. I'm going to try to get a bonus real-time revision in uh, the next week or so to make up for that, but wanted to move on with today's uh, real-time revision and return to the... Uh, the kill list that I introduced a while back. In fact, maybe even with the first real-time revision, we've been using this kill list. And what I wanted to look at today are a couple of words. Uh, the first one is started. You can see I've got my first one highlighted down here. And a very similar one is began. And these are uh, little words that love to creep into my writing. And uh, before we really get looking at how to get rid of these, I want to talk for a minute about why they're so pernicious, why we need to get, out, get them out of there. And it's usually because they stand in for what the verb should be. Um, and they, they kind of weaken our writing. Instead of just having something happen, it starts to happen or it begins to happen, right? Which makes our reader one step removed from the thing actually happening. So there's very few cases, we may come across one or two as we look at these today, where I allow started to or began to uh, to stand, but usually I can get rid of that and replace it with a stronger verb. So let's look at my first example here. Um, I shuffled past the banner bearing the company's motto. Um, and slid into the chair. I rifled in my bag for my notebook, my keys jangling inside like an alarm, and started scribbling meeting notes for Ruth. So if you'll notice here, the actual action is that she's scribbling meeting notes for Ruth. Why start doing it, right? If your reader is following along, they understand when you're introducing a new action that that's beginning at that point. So at this point, I can just lose this started and to make this much stronger, get rid of that ing, which we also learned a while ago we do not like, and just change that to scribbled. Um, and slid into the chair. I rifled in my bag for my notebook, my keys jangling inside like an alarm, and scribbled meaning notes for Ruth. So notice we haven't lost any meaning here. We know we's, that she's starting to do that. Um, and we get straight to that verb. So let's bounce around here and uh, see if we can find a couple more. So I'm inventing a new position for you. This is just moments later. She's still um, talking with Ruth. I'm inventing a new position for you. She said, the world started to spin. So this is another example where I can get rid of this, right? We know that the world wasn't spinning before, and now it is spinning. So we can assume that in this moment, it started to spin. So this I've got a couple of options for. I can just say, the world spun but I don't really like this word spun, and this seems too short, right? So I, what I have here really is a, uh, a cliche that I want to get rid of. And I've noticed when I was kind of previewing these words that I wanted to get out of here today that I use that cliche a lot. The world starts to spin, right? And really what I'm trying to show is that something's off, something's akimbo, right? Something's not quite right. So I need to find a better way to capture this so that my reader sees it in a new, fresh way and we get away from these cliches. So I um, hadn't pre-prepared for this section at all, so uh, you're going to see me, as in keeping with real-time revision, try to clean this up on the spot. So I'm inventing a new position for you, she said. The world spun. Uh, so really what I'm trying to get is her reaction of kind of things spinning out of control. There's that word spinning again. In fact, I might go to my thesaurus here and see if I can play off of spiraled, twisted, uh, gyrated. Um, not really. So really what we're getting at with the idea of, of dizziness is uh, the idea of dizziness. Dazed, distracted, dumb, giddy, groggy, shaky, wobbly, woozly. Woozly. There's a good word. Woozy is what I meant there. 
So I'm not seeing anything that jumps straight uh, to mind here as clearly a good substitution for this. Uh, so Ruth noted the movement of Grin. I'm inventing a new position for you, she said. So I'm going to change this entirely. The words struck me as if... Um, I'm just going to put in the first thing that comes to mind here from a canon. That, I, I don't like that. That's too heavy-handed at that moment. But I think you can see what I'm getting at here. Right? I'm, I'm trying to change that cliche of something beginning, something starting, to something more effective here. I'm inventing a new position for you, she said. The word struck me as if launched from a cannon. Uh, ugh, I hate, I hate that <laughs> now that I look at that. In fact, I'm going to flag this um, and uh, put a note here. I don't know if you can see my note screen there or not. Um, make a new comment here, and I'm just going to say lose the terrible... Sorry, that's off the screen a bit there. Lose the terrible simile. <laughs> so I remember to come back and clean that up. But uh, the only reason I'm leaving that for now is that I'm really not worried about that right now. I'm just trying to get rid of these started and began and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so here's another one. Bruce seemed to realize just then why I had asked about Newport. His Adam's apple moved behind his beard before he started to speak, right? Here's another one. Or why is he starting to speak? Of course he's starting to speak. That's the only way you speak. So I could lose that starting to and just say before he spoke. So again, notice how that started to is taking the place of where I really want that powerful verb to be. As Adam's apple moved behind his beard before he spoke. Lost a couple of words, which is always great. We're more concise now. We're more powerful. And we're getting straight to the verb. Let's see if we can do one more. Uh, the brief moments of shade from a canopy of trees started me thinking I should get off the road again. Uh, this is really kind of clumsy here. Um... So often I have to back up and say, what am I trying to express here? Why did I throw this started in there to begin with? So the brief moments of shade from a canopy of trees. Um, I'm going to lose this. Um, I'm doing a little other work that I need to, but I don't like this, how clunky this is. So I can just say shade from a canopy of trees um, got me thinking. Ah, I don't like this word got. That's not doing any anything better than started sent me thinking um so so my real verb here right what i'm trying to get her to do is basically come up with this idea that she should get off the road the road has been safety for her but suddenly she realizes that wait a second if i'm off the road so realize i'm, I'm talking through this to see what verbs um come to mind, come out naturally, because those are often the verbs that are begging to be in this sentence here. So shade from a cata cata canopy of trees made me realize I should get off the road. So again, this may be still a little bit clunky, but it's a lot better than began to or started to, which is much clunkier. So shade from a canopy of trees made me realize I should get off the road. Okay. So we've tried a couple of uh, started there, and I want to look at began just to see if it's functioning uh, the same way. So we'll just take kind of randomly here again. This is number four of 21 instances of began. A heavy rain began, began and tapped on the roof with enough noise to drown out all other sound. So this is one of those places where I do want uh, possibly a word that started to or began because it's something that is changing the environment, right? Before it wasn't raining, now it is raining and it's going to continue to rain for some time. So this is where the began or the started to um, might work, but I still want to get rid of it if I can. So could I just say a heavy rain tapped on the roof? Um, see, as soon as I lose that, if I just say a heavy rain tapped on the roof with enough noise, then it sounds like the rain has been going on, right? It's just describing the scene and I want, um, I want this rain to be new here. So often as, as is the case, um, in most of the words I'm trying to get rid of, it's a sign that there's a better word here, right? Maybe a better 
verb or a better way to say this. So just saying a heavy rain began doesn't ask, doesn't um, offer any kind of visualization or any new information for the reader. It's just simply stating a fact. So the sky opened. The sky opened and a heavy rain tapped on the roof with enough noise to drown all other other sounds. So here I have the sky opened, right? This is what I was trying to say earlier with began, right? So I've, I've figured out a more visual way to say this, um, a more compelling way to say this without just saying started or began. Let's try one more and see what we come up with. These are kind of fun. I don't know if, if you guys enjoy this process of revision, this word by word revision. There's something that's kind of fun about finding these little uh, clunky items of language because I know it reads better once we get rid of them. So a few times the ground began to shift underneath me and I thought I was going all the way to the bottom. So she's crossing over kind of a landslide um, at this point. And I want to get this idea that as she's crawling her way over, the ground is moving underneath her. So a few times the ground... So why do I have it begin to shift here, right? Because all it's really doing is the ground shifted. So a few times the ground shifted underneath me. And I thought I was going all the way to the bottom. Now this is still clunky. I always getting rid of commas anytime that I can. And I feel like this a few times is um, not doing very good work here, but I'm going to let that sit there because the, again, that's not what I'm looking at right now. Let's try one more. Pleasant smoke rose up from fire pits and barbecue gills, grills and my mouth again, right? Began to water. We know that her mouth wasn't watering before. It's clear that it, this is what's causing her mouth to water. So it doesn't need to begin to water. Um, and my mouth watered. Now that's kind of a weird say way to say this. And my mouth watered. So I'll probably come back and rework this. But hopefully you can see the value of get ridding, getting rid of that started to, began to. If you're like me, that your first pass through, you're going to find a billion of these things. Um, and they're going to be a little bit frustrating to get rid of sometimes, but your writing will always be better. The more concise we can get it, the, the, the f less words um, we make our readers kind of slog through without getting to the point, the better our writing is going to be. Whether they ever notice it or not, uh, it's a very rare reader other than maybe a reader of Hemingway or somebody like that who's, who really notices the, the sparsity of or the sparseness of language. Uh, but on a subconscious level, we do notice it, right? When we start have to, having to read more words, more phrases than we need to, that's when writing starts to feel a little bit ponderous and a little bit unpolished. So, so I think we're going to finish up there. That's our little introduction to how to get rid of began and started. And um, hopefully you've enjoyed that. And I have a lot more to, to dig out of my uh, writing. So that's what I'll be doing. Thanks again for hanging out with me for another real-time revision. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, if you have, if you know of other writer friends that might um, enjoy these kind of resources, I would love it if you would mention the Patreon team to them and invite them to be a part of it. That would mean so much to me. And uh, anyway, appreciate you so much being out there and being so supportive of the show. And we'll see you in another week or so for another real-time revision. Thanks. Bye-bye.